Expect something a little eerie, but quite whimsical at the same time, I'd say something quite different as far as like installation art goes. This exchange of a power dynamic that you were watched, but now you are the one watching, you are the bird. Power comes very much from how you present yourself to other people. It's how you interact with, with people and what you make of it, what you use it for. It's about that tension between us knowing that we're being observed, whilst at the same time understanding how we position in relation to others. So this project is about surveillance and power relationships. And these, of course, are very important subjects. But for me, it doesn't mean that they need to be necessarily treated in a non-humorous or non-playful way. So um, we approach the subject by inviting the audience into an absurd scenario. They are inside what we call an observation nest, and they are um, engaged in simple tasks to do with the spacing yourself uh, in a location. So for instance, if you imagine you are on the tube, where would you sit? Or if you imagine you are at a meeting, where would you sit around that table? And whilst performing these tasks, they are constantly reminded to ignore the birds watching them. And this idea of having these characters, these humanoid birds in suits uh, that are there constantly inspecting the audience uh, and reminding the audience of this paradox of ignoring their presence is of course the point of this installation. You go downstairs and then there's like a number of kids running after you trying to like um, grab your beak and making mocking crow sounds. Like that is something that you cannot, uh, that I did not expect. There's a lot of things that you cannot anticipate. You just have to trust your impulse and um, perform. I particularly enjoy it when I see children or family audiences engage with the humanoid birds around the Tate Modern. Um, and I love the fact that this can provide an imaginative experience so that there are different levels of entry to this installation. And I think that's, for me, what art should do. Um, so that a specialist um, spectator, as much as the broader uh, notion of the public and mind, can both enjoy the same project for different reasons. People are really um, curious as to what what is going on. And it's been amazing to see the students bring people up through the building as well. This sort of Pied Piper trail of people following those students up into the space. In art, you are limited by the physical set and by the resources you can use. Meanwhile, in VR, you can create any word you want. So when it comes to art practice, I think it's it's great connection between the two, especially for this exhibition. Yes, I created a physical part. He has uh, people dressed as birds, they're walking around, you, you go into the physical set. But then in VR, we were able to take it much further because a uh, person wears the headset and they are the bird. You can fly around, you can see things, you can experience things which in reality you wouldn't have access to. There are many components to this. It's not just the installation here on this floor, Tate Exchange, it's also the performance of the um, birds that go through the Tate modern spaces. But of course, there is more to that. There is also the virtual reality component and the talks. And the talks are completely inherent to the way that the piece works because through the talks, we advance the aspects that we are trying to represent um, artistically. Uh, and within those talks, I love the fact of having different guests from different disciplines who themselves bring other elements. So we've had uh, choreography, opera, impromptu performances, and all that creates a truly multidimensional experience for the public. Working with the Tate Exchange has been really eye-opening, especially as students. It's really good to see the kind of opportunities that can be presented to us, that we can be kind of involved in a big massive organisation such as the Tate, giving something back to the public rather than just being a viewer. They have had their thoughts challenged, they've had their thoughts changed perhaps as well, but they've really got something from that experience that's been really, you know, a meaning for them, quite emotional for them, that's really touched them. 
both live experiences and simulated experiences make us reflect of our ambiguous position in the world, where we are observed and yet we're observing everybody else, where we are in a state of constant surveillance to the point that our body, um, to some extent, is affected by, by that, that same state. And equally, in order to live a positive life, we have to get ourselves to ignore what, you know, the elephant in the room, or should we say, the bird in the room.